I'm putting in a new well house and I wanted to take a second to show you this pump troll or pump controller. It's a pressure switch that you use to start and stop your uh, pump. When the pressure gets low, it turns your pump on until it gets to a certain range and it turns back off. But the interesting thing about this one, and this is the ones, the type that I have used for years and years, but it's not the most prevalent type. And so that's why I wanted to show it to you. The nice thing about these is, is so they have a, a lever that you can turn them off. Okay, and then when you go to turn them on, down is not necessarily on. It's basically automatic. I think it might say that here on the side. Well, no, so you've got a, you have, yeah, off, automatic, and start. And so the difference with this one is it will, if the pressure gets too low, it will shut off your pump. So the nice thing is it will save your pump if you run out of water or you break a line or for some reason your pump loses its prime. One of those reasons uh, that you're not able to get water through your pump, it won't run it for two or three hours and burn it up. It will, uh, it'll turn the, the pump off if the pressure gets below a set amount. So this one does, let's see what the range is. It's 40 to 60, 40 to 60 PSI uh, on the, the upper side. So the way you do these is, but you just pull this up to start it and you can see those contactors going together and you hold it until the pressure gets above the cutoff point, you let go and then it'll build up to where the, what the top end is, which is 60 and then it shuts off. And then when it comes down below the set point, it'll kick back on. All right, let's get it installed. All right, so I've got a T coming off my main line and this is where I'm gonna put my pressure switch right here. I've got a little bit of Teflon tape on there making sure I didn't have any that came over the end because I don't want it piece to break loose and get up in my switch here. Now I'll just screw this down on there. Now I've put a strain relief on here and this did not come with the switch. I had to add this. But that just keeps, you really don't want to run the wires just through the hole because it, this pump as it kicks on and off it's going to vibrate and you don't want it to wear through the insulation over time. I do, of course, have the power off. Okay, so these wires here, that's my power in. This is the power, I mean, this is the wires to my uh, pump. So you put th these two connect together and these two connect together when the switch throws. We'll get the power wires on there first. They're gonna be the most difficult because they're not stranded wire. All right, that's got it wired up. Now this one is wired up for 220. So it doesn't matter as long as I put, this is the black wire and the red wire. And then this is uh, one wire to the pump and another wire to the pump. So with 220, as long as I get one of the wires, one of the power wires to a pump wire and the other power wire to the other pump wire, I'm good. If this was a 110 pump, I'd wanna be sure I got the neutral wire connected to the neutral wire of the pump and the positive wire connected to the positive wire of the pump. This is where you attach the ground from the pump and the ground from your power supply. This is the portion of the video where I demonstrate how the pressure switch works. However, I can't do that. So uh, if, if you notice, this is a different pump than what I showed you and the pressure switch is in a different place. And so let me just kind of explain uh, why I can't demonstrate it to you. So there's no pressure tank here. The pressure tank is in another building about 100 feet away. And I actually, I had to move the pressure switch to the location where the uh, pressure tank is. And it's in a location where I can't get a camera in there and I can't show you. So what happens when I put it here, what happens is the, the water comes into the pump, builds up pressure, and it has to go out this one inch line and go to the pressure tank. Well, so the pressure builds up here higher than it does at the pressure tank. And so what happens is this thinks that this will hit 60 PSI and shut off. But then it immediately drops because the pressure tank is still filling up. So it just goes on and off and on and off and on and off and on and off like that. 
So I had to just basically I bypassed this. I'm using these two screws. This one just connects the pump wire to the the power that's coming from that switch, that other switch. So this is really just bypassed. But uh, like I said before, I can demonstrate it kind of for you. So you just hold this up until the pressure gets above 20 and then uh, it will continue to run on its own. It'll, it'll run all the way up to 60 PSI and then it'll cut off. And then it'll, you can use that water until you get down to 40 PSI and then it'll come back on and it'll run and it'll continue to do that. Now if you have some kind of a failure where you're, you lose your prime or something like that and your pressure drops below 20, this will cut out again and you'll have to come hold the button up again until you get to 20 PSI. So the reason I had to change out this pump was the pump that I had was it was high volume. It would put out a lot of water, but only at about 45 PSI. The problem with that is my house sits up on a, a, a mountain and it's probably 50 feet vertically up to that. And so it wasn't producing enough pressure by the time it got up to the house. Uh, it was only, you know, putting out, well, it couldn't hardly run a sprinkler. So I, uh, this one will, it puts out less volume, but it puts out about, I think, 78 or 80 PSI. I'll link this pump in the description along with this pump troll in case you're interested. That's why I had to change it out. Okay, well, I'm sorry I wasn't able to demonstrate it the way I had wanted to, but I, I do think the information still holds for itself. Hope this was interesting to you. Thank you for watching.